Mixtral is the latest large language model released by Mistral AI. It's a mixture of experts model, which means that at a high level, rather than having only one model to answer questions, we have many. In Mixtral's case, there are eight of these models, and then there's a router that sits at the front. And when you ask a question, the reader will pick two of the models to attempt to answer your question before sending back a response. If we look further down the page on the, the blog post, we can see that it, the, the metrics say it's sort of similar in performance to GPT 3.5. And then if we look on the cloud version of Mistral, they have named this, uh, so this Mistral is called Mistral Small. The original Mistral, the, the OG Mistral, if you like, is Mistral Tiny, and then they have a, an, an extra one called Mistral Medium. So we're going to try out Mixtral, or i.e. Mistral Small, and we're going to use it using a Llama. And since version 0.1.16, they've got this available locally, a quantized model that takes 48 gigabytes of RAM. I think the original model would take well over 100 gigabytes of memory to run, so we wouldn't be able to do that on a consumer laptop. Uh, so my machine has 64 gigabytes of RAM, uh, which gets shared between the CPU and the GPU, and we're going to give uh, Mixtral a try. And we're going to ask it a few questions, and we'll compare it to how the original uh, Mistral 7B model does. And we're going to be looking at the quality of the answers, whether the instructions were followed, and then how long it takes. So if we call a Llama list, you can see the models that I've got downloaded onto my machine. So we see we've got the Mistral latest, that's the original one up there, that's four gig. And then if we look down a little bit, we've got the Mistral latest, and that's 26 gig, and so that's the new one. So let's start by having a look at a BBC article about the UK Supreme Court upholding a decision that a patent can't be held by AI. And you can see there's a few details uh, about the story and how the judges dismissed the bid to reverse their decision. And then there's a quote from someone. So we're going to ask the original model. So uh, Mr. 8B, can you summarize this article in one bullet point? Uh, and so it comes back and it's, it's actually a reasonably good summary, I would say, but it's not, it's not one bullet point, right? It's given us lots of uh, bullet points. It's probably half the length of the article itself. And we can also see at the bottom how long it took, the prompt eval rate and the eval, and the eval rate. And so it's pretty quick how, how quickly it was generating stuff. Let's now do the same, but with mixture. So we'll just do that on the other side. And you can see this is a bit slower, but it has done it as only one bullet point. And it's, I think it's done a pretty good job of summarizing that. Uh, if you look at the, the rates that have come back, the prompt eval rate and the eval rate are much lower than what we got for the, for the other one, which is kind of, I guess it's kind of what we expected because it is a much bigger model. Uh, let's see what happens if we get it to try and do something that doesn't make sense. We're just going to delete the cutting of the article into the prompt. So we're just going to say, basically, can you summarize nothing? So we'll ask Mistral first. Uh, so that actually says, I'm unable to summarize the article. Please provide the article. Let's ask Mistral to do the same thing. Uh, and this time it, it sort of makes up uh, some random thing. Now this one's kind of interesting because sometimes when I run it, Mistral will make stuff up. And sometimes when I run it, Mixtral will make it up. So in this case, it was Mixtral that made something up. Uh, but I don't know whether this is a, this is a, like we can take this as a, as, as a, as a deterministic result, uh, if you like. Let's have a look at another thing. So here I've got a message written by my friend Gunnar Morling about getting his talk accepted to Kafka Summit next year. So this was a LinkedIn message. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask Mistral, can you tell me the sentiment of this article, but only use the words positive or negative, and then we'll pass in the article. And if we run that, it comes back and says, hey, based on the given text, the sentiment is positive, da 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 da, da. Now that is absolutely correct. It is, that he, Gunnar is obviously happy about getting accepted, but it hasn't followed the instruction uh, completely, has it, right? It's added in a bunch of context. So let's do the same with Mixtral. And again, we'll expect it to take a little bit longer, but this time it has only come back with the word positive, which is exact, exactly what we wanted. And I've with the, sometimes you can kind of play around with the prompt a bit and kind of force it uh, into, into doing what you want. But I wanted to just see if I just give it in the most simple way, will it follow the instruction? And so Mixtral probably wins this one. Let's now have another, a look at another thing. This is a thing that I usually get ChatGPT to do. So I read the read like a lot of romantic comedy books and I sometimes just get like the, the transcript from, or a little bit of the transcript from the Amazon page. I paste it in and so this is what this one looks like so you can see what the book's about. Uh, and then I'll ask the uh, ChatGPT normally, can you suggest some prompts so I can just review it so I can just remind myself but what books I've read. So let's see what Mistral comes up with. So if we go from the bottom, so reflect on the themes of forgiveness, redemption, and following your dreams. If we go up, consider the novel's use of Dickensian elements. We go up a bit, writing style, tone. It's not bad, actually. So if we go all the way up, we can say, it's, it's, uh, analyze the relationship. The setting. These are pretty good. I'd say these are pretty good. These are probably on par with what with what ChatGPT suggests. How about if we ask Mistral to do the same thing? 
Uh, so this one, so it ends with, hey, would you recommend it? Uh, how do they address forgiveness? Pretty similar stuff, I'd say, as we as we sort of scroll up through the through the other answers. I wouldn't say there's a big difference between the two models on this one. Let's now have a look at coding. So I know neither of these models are specifically for coding, but let's see how they go on anyway. So here's a bit of code that I that I was using to, to process some data, uh, and I was using the Dask library to parallelize it. And I wanted to know, can I just limit the number of threads? So I'm gonna ask uh, Mistral to do this. So it's a, it kind of su suggests I should use this dask.bags uh, API, and then it sort of shows how, how, how you should tweak the code uh, to do it. Um, and sort of all the way down. And I think this would probably work, but it's quite, it's quite a big, I'd say quite a big uh, change to the code that it's asking me to do, uh, or more than I want to do. And what about Mixtral if we do the same thing? So it's saying this time use the uh, use the client. So it's asking me to create a client, shows me how to do it. Uh, I don't think it quite updates my code correctly to show me how to do it. Uh, I should say this is the answer that I got from ChatGPT for the same a question, and this is a much simpler in a way, and it does actually work. So it's just saying, hey, dask.config.set, scheduler equals threads, set the number of workers, and that actually does work. That does seem to control the number of workers. Overall, I'd say it looks like Mixtral is slightly better at following instructions, but predictably it takes longer to generate responses. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about the original uh, Mistral model, check out this video up here.